G'day guys, welcome back to the My Mate Podcast. Uh, I want to start doing a few more of these solo ones because I just love talking about psychology and I love you know practical tools, practical insights and things. And um, I love speaking to guests and I love getting to the root of like, you know, what got them into the industry and, you know, whatever they do and all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, this podcast began for personal reasons, selfish reasons, because I wanted to create a community, um, you know, centered around people who wanted to get to know themselves at a very, very, uh, you know, subjective level. So, you know, very much about how we can learn about the mind, how we can apply our learning to our lives inside and outside, and how we can grow as individuals and, and, and human beings. You know, I was writing, I've just began my third book. So I'm just writing a series, really. So the first book was, Yes, I'm Fine, Just Tired. The second one was, Yes, I'm Fine, Just Busy. That's off to the editor now. Um, the editor being my dad, who I'm lucky um, to say is actually a professional editor. Um, and the book I'm currently writing now is called, Yes, I'm Fine, Just Thinking. And you know, there are many different reasons which we don't need to go into as to why they're entitled those things. But I wanted to write a book that not only helped people understand the mind, but how to actually apply that learning very practically. So the third book, which is obviously the one I'm writing right now, is all about awareness and then integration. They're my dogs, in case you uh, in case you hear that grumble and moaning behind me. Um, it's all about awareness and integration. So essentially what happens when you go and speak to a therapist, okay, you are attempting to unpack layers of awareness. You're trying to find out more about yourself. They are trying to guide you because a good therapist is one who doesn't indoctrinate you into their way of being, but actually helps finesse or, or prompt you um, so that you can cultivate your own, which is really, really important. I think um, any therapist, psychologist, counselor, um, spiritual psychologist, whatever you want to call it, whatever, it really doesn't matter. But anyone who's offering you skills or advice shouldn't try to indoctrinate you. So if you feel like you're seeing someone right now who is, and you know, the, the word that you could probably hint at is should, you know, you should do this, or maybe you shouldn't, you know, it's like, well, okay, there's some indoctrination going on there. So I want you to have a think about how the therapist you're going to see can actually help you become more of who you already are in a more fulfilling way. So it's a really good way of thinking about it. That really helped me when I was actually going to therapy before I became a therapist. Um, so essentially what they're trying to do in the, in the therapy world is help you unpack layers of yourself, get to know yourself. So if you come and speak to someone, um, you know, when you are talking about the fact that you have high anxiety, what they will try to do is help you see why you might have anxiety. So a good therapist won't just treat the symptom, they'll get to the root cause so that you can learn from your life. You know, just straight off the top of my head, if you never grieved properly over the death of a loved one, and you went on living in you know in life, and we, we do need to do that, but we also do need that you know the only way to progress through grieving process is to go through the grieving process. It's so necessary, you know. It's an identity shift. We need to shed the emotion. We need to feel and express the emotion. If you don't allow yourself to do that, and then there's this thing biting at you, but you're masking it with you know painkillers, hard drugs, you know, not sleeping, trying to get the deadlines done in your you know in your respective career, you might develop an anxiety disorder. Now, a therapist will try to understand why you have high anxiety, where the uh, you know the specificity of the pathology, and then help you move through in this example the grieving process, so that not only do you know why you have anxiety but you know how it, where it's emanating from, get rid of the root cause, and then you go on and live your life. And what that is going to do is going to unpack yourself more, okay? So after that successful session or series of sessions, you'll know, as an example, that if you don't grieve properly, these things can develop, okay? So therapy, speaking to a therapist is an awareness tool. And I'm writing about six different awareness tools in this book. One of them is also open, honest communication. It doesn't have to be with a therapist, but the truth is confronting. And if you have a friend who can um, provide a space for you to confront the truth, now that they might be giving you constructive criticism, um, but uh, their ability to hold space for you whilst you 
understand yourself with their finesse, if they're a really brilliant friend, um, can be really powerful too. So communication tools are one example of unpacking awareness. You can do this yourself in solitude. You know, in fact, one thing that I love to do is sit still with my eyes shut every day for 20 minutes. So I get to know myself in silence, okay? Now, whether you're into, um, you know, spirituality and what the mythologies used to teach about solitude and all this sort of stuff, it's a, when you are um, cultivating greater consciousness, that's a masculine thing to do, okay? And then the flow is, you know, moving with life is a more of a feminine thing to do. Now, obviously, we all have masculine and feminine um, aspects within us, but consciousness is the masculine energy or light or love is the feminine. We need both, you know. Depends on whether or not you're a masculine core or a feminine core as to which one you actually reside in the most. Okay, so as a masculine being myself, I like to reside in that infinite consciousness as best as I can. So I really want to, freedom is an idea, you know, more is less, all that sort of stuff. I'll get into all that in a later podcast, but I'm really, you know, Sean and I are really fascinated in that kind of stuff, you know, um, relationship polarity and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So it's it's really interesting. But meditation, getting to know yourself by sitting time, by sitting with yourself. How could, what is, what is another better way to do that? You know, if you have a best friend, the reason why they're probably your best friend is because you hang out with them more than any other friend. So why not do that to yourself? Why not become your own best friend? So that's another really great awareness um, unpacking tool. But I suppose you see where I'm going with all this, this idea that awareness is important, but if we don't integrate that, we actually don't change at all. In fact, if we just try to pile more layers of awareness, we're effectively just ruminating or engendering depression, which is just chronic rumination as an example. So you have to, there's my dog again, you have to unpack and integrate simultaneously. And that's what I try to do with my clients and I truly believe that is the best way to go about it. When you're, it's never easy, you know, when you're facing a problem, a psychological problem, it's it's never easy to confront the truth, like I said before, because it may have been the first time you've done that in a very long time. And just like an email inbox, you might have thousands of emails, probably from very angry respondents or dear friends. Um, who wanted to get a hold of you, but just couldn't because you were neglecting, you know, in that way. So when we start to unpack layers of ourselves, it can be very, very anxiety provoking. So that's why it's important to 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 provide a space for that unpacking. Okay, I don't believe that it is necessarily appropriate to just unpack without integrating, because if you just continue to probe the depths of your consciousness you can go insane. And speaking from personal experience, um, I, I truly believe I, you know, I led to some, I, I induced some form of mild psychosis when I was living in Bali because I was just analyzing dream after dream after dream, journaling, um, just going crazy, spending time with myself. And I wasn't a very functional human being. I wasn't a good partner. Um, and I wasn't really applying some of the things that I was hypocritically t- telling other people to do at the same time. So, I think you have to find that balance. And there's a really good analogy that I love. If you are going to wade the the unknown waters, so if you're going to go out into a river and you don't know where the river's going to take you, it's probably a good idea to attach a rope to yourself, um, you know, wrapped around a really strong tree on solid ground so that you can go and do that and explore what needs to be explored because you need to grow and learn about yourself whilst... Uh, preventing insanity, okay? So that after you have done the exploration, you can come back, you can get stuck into your routine again, you know, you've done your bit for the day. Too much routine um, can lead to boredom, rigidity, um, you know, uh, poor habits can lead to self-tyranny, um, where you become attached to these ideas of who you should be, which can actually lead to anxiety disorders and other neuroses. So too much of that order isn't isn't good. The other side of that is too much chaos, okay, or too much uncertainty or unpredictability. And like I said before, I can, you know, and I'm butchering this, but it can make you go insane because then you don't know who you are anymore. So what we want to do is we want to consistently try to chip away at parts of ourselves that we're questioning whilst augmenting um the parts of us that are that are going really well. So this is this lovely dichotomy between awareness and integration. Okay, um, 
I hope you're following with I hope you're following along so far. When we are providing space for ourselves, okay, so I like to give my clients homework. And one of these pieces of homework is these solitude meditations. So just setting an alarm and not doing anything and allowing whatever thought to come up, come up and spend some time because the psyche is essentially a container. For everyone listening, this is on YouTube as well, but I'm just kind of cupping my hands like a chalice um, or like you're about to do a goblet squat for, for any uh, functional fitness addicts out there. But uh, the psyche is like a container, right? And it's like a bowl, okay? And things will come into it and things will come out. But to the degree that we attach ourselves to, you know, negatively or positively, uh, thoughts and ideas is the degree that actually stays stuck in the psyche. So what we want to get very good at is allowing them to be in there and then also simultaneously allowing them to move away if, if they, if, you know, if they need to, okay? We want to try to detach from that idea that we are our thoughts because we are actually the sum total of our behaviors. So when you are sitting with yourself, try to see if you can almost imagine providing a container for your thoughts and feelings and emotions uh, to, to manifest themselves. And then once that time is up, move off and then get back into your orderliness, back into your structure, back into your routine. You know, Psychological maturation um, is never ending until the day we die, okay? So by definition, uh, it's always gonna keep going. And if you want to become a more well-rounded whole individual, you have to give yourself time for that self-exploration. So that 20 minute meditation is a really great practical tool that you can use to try to detach yourself from whatever arises, allow it to be there, and then move off and continue to do what you need to do. And what you'll find is that as you provide space for yourself across the days, the months, um, the years, the insights that you gain, you know, essentially from befriending yourself will lead to gradual changes in your life. This is the most important thing. If you can take away one thing from this podcast, this would be it. To avoid an existential crisis, we must continue to expose ourselves to ourselves. okay? We have to, like I said before, probe the depths of who we are because how we relate to the world around us will, will either, and the degree to which we do authentically, will either move us in the right direction or the bad direction or the wrong direction, okay? Now, that's from a subjective perspective. So... An existential crisis is essentially someone suddenly realizes after some acute traumatic experience, um, you know, find comes home and finds that their partner's cheating on them or gets laid off at work or wakes up one day and realizes everything they've been doing for the past 25 years, climbing the hierarchies as a very cliche example, was, was all um, a very, very disingenuous way of being. And then that they just plummet as a result. We want to avoid that, and we absolutely can, but it requires consistent attention to the self. So I might ask you, if you were my client now, what do you do in your life that is just for you? You know, people respond really productively to creative expression, you know, painting. I I don't know who I would be without my writing. Um, I try to get as much time as I possibly can for myself um, th- throughout the day, you know, and then I have to attend to my responsibilities and the fact that I'm with someone I love and all this sort of stuff. But you have to give yourself time to, to get to know yourself. At the very end of the day, think about, think about how quickly five years go by. This was something that a, a podcast guest named Craig Harper um, said to me on, on the show um, a couple of months back, he said, think about how fast five years goes by. And it's like you think, okay, well, what was I doing in 2015? And then a couple of memories will arise. You're like, holy shit, that actually felt like yesterday. I feel like if it was 10 years, 20 years, it's like, oh yeah, I've heard that before. Time flies, yada, yada, yada. But five years, it's not too long, but it's long enough to realize that this is seriously moving. You know, Abraham Lincoln was right. Time waits for no man. Um, it's unbelievably fleeting, this life, you know, if we get to live a full life to 80s and 90s. Why would you want, why would you want to be anything other than selfish? And I think you have to be selfish so that you can be selfless. I feel most at home when I'm discussing psychology with people, you know, um, 
if I hadn't probed the depths of my consciousness to the degree that I have, and I hope in five years' time I'll be saying something completely different, if I hadn't done that to where I am right now, I might be trying to help people with quantum physics or some some other thing like that, you know. Um, I might still be trying to make the AFL or something like that, you know. And it just I just wouldn't, purely because of the fact that it's not a truest expression of my authentic self, wouldn't be able to give back. I wouldn't be able to be selfless because I haven't had I haven't spent enough time to find out who I really am and how I can serve. Um, you know, they often say in the modern Instagram world that uh, you know the flip side of your deepest pain is 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 your deepest purpose, and you know the the dichotomy between pain and pleasure is such that because I went down and stooped to that level of pain, I now know how I can gain that sense of pleasure. Now, the pleasure is a selfish thing, but if you can give that back to other people, it becomes very purposeful. Now, this is a huge tangent. This is obviously what happens a lot on my podcast if you listen to more than one show, but all of that, you know, this is this is some of the most meaningful, fulfilling stuff that, that we could talk about here, that we could have a conversation about. You know, that idea about serving the world, serving yourself, being who you could be, actualizing your potential. You can't get to those levels unless you know who you are. Now, in my second book, my contention was very much that there is no you. You know, you don't, like like an atom, right? You keep going down and you keep breaking the subatomic level and there's still more stuff to break down. Um, so far, we know, so, you know, I think it's like an electron, a gluon or something like that, but we haven't gone further than that yet. So there's no real like cemented, oh, this is who I am, right? But if we continually unpack layers of ourselves, we go, oh, I do this because that happened to me then. Or I'm trying to be an AFL player, hint, hint, because I wanted the validation from my dad. Now I get along really well with my dad, but that was how I got his love because we could really um, talk and, and have good conversations over football. So if we continue to probe ourselves, and uh, please don't take that out of context, um, we will start to gain those kind of insights. I do this because of this, and then we have a choice. Do I want to keep doing that? What is a deeper expression of myself? What do I really seem to be enjoying right now? How does the time fly? Like, like, like there's no time at all. When do I hit my flow states? What am I doing? All of that sort of stuff can only be found when you provide a space um, in which to get to know yourself. Now, in the beginning of this podcast, how long have we been going for here, team? Nearly 20 minutes, that's cool. In the beginning of the show, we were we were talking about the differences between awareness and integration, okay? One thing that I love, and Siobhan loves this as well when she has her breathwork clients, is that when you meditate or when you spend time with yourself contemplating, you know, going camping or going for a walk without your phone, things will come up and you're like, oh, shit, that's interesting. If you journal about that and then you start to unpack that even further, again, you can start to decide if you want to continually live your life like that or if you want a change in direction. So to use that example before, once I started to really get clear of the fact that football for me was grounded upon a need for external validation, that arose a whole degree of uncertainty and it was difficult for years, really, if I'm being honest, because I'd attached my identity to my football, to the, this idea of becoming a football player for literally 20 fucking years. And for that to to find out where that was coming from was painful, <laughs> to say the least. But what arose from it was, like I said before, a very deep love of psychology and um, getting to know you guys, which has been really cool. So... It is confronting, but so is life. And I think to really truly have an experience, which is, I think, what we're simply here to do, is just have an experience, you know. Um, you're going to have to have the pain and the pleasure. You know, you can't have one without the other. And you don't want to. If you have too much pleasure, you become manic and impulsive and weird. <laughs> you want to have some of the challenge, you know, because that gives your life meaning. Like, holy shit, I got through that. How did I get through that, you know? That's the cool stuff. That's the really, really... They're, they're, that's that's where the stories come from, you know? And uh, I, I think it's really important to have that sort of stuff. That's a Dyson in the background 
uh, if you're wondering. I think Siobhan's on the Dyson, on the vacuum cleaner. So she should be. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, so yeah, you, you want to have both. And what I would say to integrate some of your stuff that, that arises, and I'll finish on this point, to integrate some of the stuff that arises, have a think about changing the habits. You know, if you find out that the reason you've been climbing the corporate hierarchy for 18 years is because, you know, when something traumatic happened to you when you were 16, this led to this true need to prove yourself to the world. Why not start having to think about doing something else? You might not quit your job for another 18 years, but you might start painting on the weekends It might start thinking, oh, before that experience, I used to paint all the time. I used to draw mazes. I used to sculpt. I I never used to be able to get out of trees. I used to trampoline all the time. It might lead to just a little change. And who knows what happens with those little changes after five, six years when the boat steers and changes direction. So again, none of this stuff deals in absolutes. We're not, as soon as we gain that awareness, integrating it wholeheartedly and going, okay, complete change because that might be another form of distraction. But we want to gradually test the waters, gradually question ourselves, and always be open to confrontation of the truth, because the truth is, after all, the way things are. And if we acquiesce to the way things are, we will feel like we're leading a path of least resistance, which is what the Taoists and the Confucianists spoke about. If you can become like water and flow seamlessly through life, Uh, by definition, we won't really have a struggle and it will feel almost, you know, for the religious out there, that we are being who we were meant to be, okay? So I hope that gives you guys some practical skills about when you're engaging therapy or having an open, honest conversation or meditating or moving or whatever kind of insight you're trying to gain, how you can apply that and, uh, you know, the, the, the title of this podcast is, is essentially going to be called um, Containing Your Emotions because we have become very bad at speaking the language of the emotions in this day and age. It's a very foreign language. We're very good at rationality to a degree. You could argue that. Um, you could argue that our ability not to deal with our emotions is very irrational because <laughs> that leads to like, a pro- you know, a, an external projection. That's for another podcast. Um, but we need to learn how to speak that language, especially the language of the self. You need to know you more than anyone, more than the one you love the most. Uh, I mean, I don't even need to explain that. So if you can learn more about yourselves and then apply what you've learned, you will have a more fulfilling life. That is the counselor's uh, absolute truth here, okay? So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that episode of the podcast. It was a shorter one. Please pay no attention to the vacuum cleaner there. <laughs> and uh, if, if, you need, if you need help with any of this stuff, reach out to me. Just send me an email, mindmatecounseling at gmail.com. Hit me up on the socials and, uh, and we, can, we can kind of funnel into to your truth a little bit more, okay? Thanks, guys. As always, love you lots.